Arriving to meet me with flowers is British National Party candidate Richard Barnbrook. He's standing in Barking and Dagenham for the local elections. BNP has put candidates up in seven of the 17 wards. The flowers are for Margaret Hodge, Barking's MP, as thanks. Of her comments, eight out of ten of her constituents are considering voting for us. She's actually helped our campaign unbelievably. Barking East London, if you're in marketing or politics, this is working or lower middle class. It's Labour's traditional heartland where they'd always have picked up the votes, but perhaps no more. When the people come to the doors and talk to us, they're very disenchanted with New Labour and the Conservative Party. Pat used to be Labour's Mayor of Barking until he tells me Labour changed. Losing traditional support is a major concern for local MPs. If there is a surge of support for any fringe far-right uh, far wing parties, that it shows that we have to be open and discuss every issue and not leave any agenda to any fringe party to discuss. There's fracture occurring in terms of traditional class politics, traditional ideological demarcations, traditional, you know, traditional terrain that different parties occupy. They're all gravitating towards some sort of mythical Middle England that they're see seeking to triangulate around. Sure. There's a lot of dissatisfaction there. Are you failing? Um, well, it's up to the people to decide. Dissatisfaction might be why voters are looking elsewhere, why some marginal parties are becoming less marginal, why a two-year study out this week finds one in four people in the UK would now consider voting BNP. My wife don't like the idea, but I, I'm tending to go to you. This, this is local, isn't it? It's it is local, local. It's local. a local election. It's a yeah. local election. Yeah. Who, did you, who did you vote for before, sir? Um, I voted for Labour, actually. Labour. How long have you been voting for, or considering voting for us? Uh, this, is I, this is the first time. Who did you used to vote for before, sir? Labour. Don't mind me asking. I won't ever vote Labour again. Not about to miss out on an opportunity, Richard's been canvassing in his ward like crazy. After all, if people here do feel failed and let down by the major parties, they're going to be turning to the other ones. And here, apart from Labour and Conservative, there's only a UKIP candidate, the UK Independent Party. Do you think there's a limit to what the country can sustain by immigration? Well, the population's not growing that fast, is it? The population's changing, I'll give you that. It's changing. It's changing over the world. It's not right. just a British thing, it's a fact. Yeah. So you go to the USA, it's just the yes. same, the same everywhere. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, the British National Party is fighting a losing battle. They come in this country, no wonder we've got no hospital beds. Well, our party's nothing to do with racism, madam. Keen it's to distance a, uh, himself from overt racism, nevertheless, he says a tough stand on immigrants makes him popular. 90% of the houses up for sale here now have only one viewer, either Africans, blacks or Asians. And people around here feel that the community is breaking down. The new visitors, new people moving in, don't seem to harmonise with the local people. In the UK, the BNP has 24 council seats. In Barking and Dagenham, it has none. It thinks it will win five seats, but it won't if the local Stop the BNP group has anything to do with it. What we've been doing and will be doing right up to election day on May the 4th is producing newspapers like this. You've also written to people. We've written individual letters to vo voters um, asking them <coughs> not to vote for the BNP because there are probably two or three wards here where 5% could go either way. Nobody can be certain what will happen on polling day, but even if BNP fail to win seats, this voice of a London community sounds very much like a political cry for help. Sia Trench uh, reporting there. Here at the Steps Working Men's Club, I'm joined by Dawn Butler, who's the Labour MP for Brent South, uh, where we are today. Greg Hans, Tory MP for Hammersmith and Fulham. Lynn Featherstone is uh, the Liberal Democrats spokesperson on Home Affairs and Simon Woolley is for Operation Black Vote. But let's um, talk to uh, Nick Griffin, leader of the BNP first. He joins us from um, uh, Birmingham. Thanks for joining us. Is it a um, deliberate strategy to uh, create um, uh, innuendo or rumours about Muslims and, uh, and Africans? Are you just sort of happy to benefit from prejudice or misunderstanding that there might be down there on the ground? No, there's no prejudice or misunderstanding about what's happening in Barking and Dagenham. This is a community which, even according to its own MP, uh, say five or six years ago, was almost totally white working class. And it's being swamped by a wave of non-white African immigration. What do you do about that? 
Well, given that most of these people are asylum seekers who are supposed to stop, stop in the first safe country they can get to, the government should merely enforce the law and say you shouldn't be allowed but, to pass half a dozen safe countries to get here to safe, soft touch Britain. Oh, sorry to interrupt, I don't want to do that uh, so early on, but fundamentally not true, is it, of course? And even your candidate there is not saying that the people that are coming and buying the houses or moving in are asylum seekers. Uh, they are people who are UK resident um, and they are buying a house that they want to in an area they want to. There's a mi the, the immigration, which is literally swamping Barking and Dagenham, is from different sources. A lot of it is people who've been resident for quite some time in Britain. These are the ones who are being paid by councils like Hackney, not by Barking and Dagenham Council, we've never said that. They're being paid by places like Hackney to move out to vacate council flats there to make way, way for fresh what, ways so, of so, asylum so what's seekers. Your answer? These what's are the people who are moving out to Barking and Dagenham. What's your answer? What does a BMP councillor, if elected, achieve? Because past experience seems to indicate people vote them on and then vote them off a few months later because they haven't achieved anything. No, that, that simply isn't true. That's happened in one or two cases where we've had poor councillors, which all parties get. Most of our candidates are councillors, are good councillors, who are going to get re-elected. But um, to some extent, you're right. Something, if you've only got one or two councillors on a council, there's very little they can do, except simply by being there, they give uh, a choice to the public, which is a, an important fundamental I of democracy. And they can at least blow the whistle when you've got uh, Labour councils in particular constantly uh, discriminating I'm, against I'm local white I'm, I'm residents. I'm curious, I'm curious to find out, when you say you want to cut politically correct spending and ensure that minorities don't get to the disproportionate amount of spending on them, what happens in a place like Brent here, where we have an ethnic majority? Do you ensure uh, that you don't spend as much, you need to spend less on the white minority here? We, we, we're not uh, standing in Brent. Uh, we're not going to get elected in Brent. Right, Brent, um, to us, is a warning of what's going to happen which in the Which is the point, London, because you accept there is a, there is a big limit to your reach, policy. and that shows the limit to your reach. You really are a fringe concern, and we should be under no illusions about that. No, there's a limit to our reach. We, c we can't win in areas where the white uh, British people are already in a minority. But most of the country, that isn't the case, and the opinion polls now show that there's a huge groundswell of support for the British National Party and revulsion. It's not just against the Labour Party, it's all the other political parties who are cuddled up on the centre ground saying mass immigration, globalisation, it's all wonderful and screw the white working okay, class. A good, um, a good point to move on. Nick Griffin, um, thanks very much indeed. I mean, Dawn Butler and Margaret Hodge said eight out of ten of the white working class people she was talking to uh, were saying they were flirting with the idea of joining the BNP. Um, marks out of ten for Margaret Hodge raising this issue. Was she right to do so? Um, well, I think what we have to do is look at, um, not really look at the BNP, because I think there's just um, been too much attention placed on that. I mean, we've already heard the reason why uh, the BNP wouldn't work or wouldn't even stand in somewhere like Brent South. I mean, we are in a working man's club at the moment. We are um, united, we are um, amalgamated, for like, as a community. So why does she and raise this issue, then? I mean, Charles Clark as well, says she was, she's overplayed this issue, and a senior cabinet member, you know, uh, slapping her down there. Where do you stand? Well, I think that what we have to do is look at the issues and the concerns that have been raised, where there are genuine concerns that have been raised, so where people feel that they're maybe marginalised, where there are not enough, for instance, social housing. We have to look at that issue. Um, immigration, we have to squash some of the myths that are around immigration. You know, saying things like... It's a bit late like, in the day. I mean, she's not doing that, though, is she? I mean, that's an absolute failure, then. Do you accept that Labour has not been able to do this in 10 years? has not been able to squash these kind of misconceptions and now does it with two weeks before an election. Well, I think, to be honest, I think a lot of that boils down to the media. I think that it doesn't make, you know, juicy headlines when we say that, you know, we've got an immigration point it's system. It's about policy, it's about got, providing enough affordable housing. But we have it? got the policy. Say the immigration point system, for instance, where we're talking about migration and it talks about looking at the, if you like, the deficit of skills within, within the UK. And where there's a deficit of skills, then people will be awarded points accordingly and then we'll get the migration for people that we need to fill those gaps. Now, that doesn't make juicy headlines, so it doesn't really get reported. So then you, it leaves that, if you like, that avenue for people to come in and then create this myth around all people who are coming a, a, in. An avenue on. that Greg Hands, the Conservatives, um, could be or should be seen to be filling and providing answers. Uh, the people are barking if they're disaffected with Labour should presumably be coming back to you, but they're not. Well, there's a very strong Conservative challenge in Barky and Dagenham, and we need to get this in perspective. Actually, across London, there are currently no BNP councillors. 
uh, across Britain in all the local elections up uh, on th a week on Thursday. There's only one in 12 people will have the opportunity to vote for the BNP. They are but what, totally but what are you doing to talk to the people party, that might go to not the BNP? Well, I just want to come back to Margaret Hodge because I think that uh, either accidentally or wittingly, she's embarking on a process of trying to talk up the BNP to make them appear the real threat to Labour in place of that Barkey and Dagenham. The reality is that Conservatives are campaigning the hardest ever we've done in Barkey and Dagenham, as we are doing across London, and we're going to do very well on Thursday. But you May have a difficulty here, don't you? I mean, David Cameron, your new leader, having been the, the, the author of a, a manifesto which put immigration right up there, it didn't wash with people. You've got some of your MPs and members uh, saying that political correctness is getting in the way of talking about this issue. Where are the Conservatives going in terms of addressing concerns about shortage of housing and immigration? What are you, what are you doing well, now? Well, the Conservative Party nationally is still going through a policy review process on, on, on a lot of these issues. But certainly locally in our council elections, we're focusing very much on the real issues that matter to people, which do include housing, but also do include crime and the environment. In places like Hammersmith, the full of my own council, which I think we're going to be set to win for the first time since 1968. Lynn Featherson, let's bring you in here. In a sense, perhaps a, a similar uh, uh, criticism as the Conservatives now. Um, perhaps one could argue the BNP becoming the receptacle of protest out there. Traditionally, Liberal Democrats been that receptacle of protest against these parties in London, but why aren't you speaking to these people that are unhappy with Labour and the Tories? Well, where I am in Haringey, we are speaking. We're not in the same sort of um, league, but I think Margaret Hodge made a great mistake. I think she, she, she talked up the BNP because she is scared. Where has she been the last few years if she did not know these problems were arising in her seat? That's the real issue. We all hear on the doorstep. Uh, problems around housing and there are issues around fairness and I think people like to think things are fair that there isn't an un inequality but I think Margaret Hodge was uh, barking up the wrong tree but and has incited what is happening but, but it no, is a minute no presence there no presence at all where you could be talking about localism you could be talking about the lack of investment well, places uh, Tim, like I wish, I wish we were there in force to do that we are we are doing it in other areas but if this is very localized and we don't have the forces on the ground in that particular location I wish we did and we will one day where the Liberal Democrats are there isn't that sort of problem where a vacuum has created and Labour have been arrogant and not bothered to listen to the people that's where the BNP create, uh, creep in and that, that I lay at Labour's door for not taking taking the issues seriously enough when there so, was time and outside of election period. Uh, and Simon Woolley is somebody that is trying to um, generate, getting people, uh, you know, black people to, yeah. to vote more. That's right. What has this debate um, done to that? Is it likely to encourage people to come out and vote? Sure. Well, it's a lot of black people are worried that we're talking about the BNP, that they're bolstered by the BNP. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that you cannot appease racism. Uh, as we've seen with Nick, Griff Nick Griffin, they've abandoned their jackboots for smart suits. But the stench of uh, fascism within this party is always there. The, the British National Party is a party that wants an all-white, all-Christian, uh, heterosexual society. So as far as they're concerned, people like me can go to hell, either forcibly or voluntary, whichever, whichever way you look at it. And, you know, and that is a sad, that is a sad indictment, actually, on democracy and on uh, in this, this country. Okay, uh, to all of you for the moment, thanks very much.